I said he's generated, what? Now he's charged up. So you better get your flow, you better part up. He's shutting down everybody with a can, he doesn't care. Cause you know that energy's about to rise in the air. So it's Hello there. Welcome to the DNA Show. As you know, I'm Althea Park. I'm Danny. <laughs> and we are live. Okay, now first off, of course, there's usually a shout out or uh, we want to do a recap or anything. But I have a actual special shout out to someone. Um, and that is this guy over here. Um, earlier today, earlier today, um, I had a little bit of an anxiety attack. And um, I was a little bit, like, worried and anxious and stuff about not just the show, I know, like, all the things that you got going on in on, on a daily life and okay. everything that happens. And it can be consuming and overwhelming. So earlier today, I had an episode, and um, he was uh, very, like, you know, kept his distance and says, don't worry, you know, because I told him, just get out of my face. He left, he went, he left me at the laundromat. That's where I wanted to do my folding all by myself. And um, then afterwards, I kept on, like, trying to keep myself calm and everything, and I needed that little something. And Danny actually tried to calm me down several times on the phone today, you know, worrying about me, saying, well, cancel the show. I don't care because, you know, you're, 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 there's no DNA without the A. Exactly. <laughs> now, to all the men, take note on that. And if you ain't going to take note on that, I will send you a text myself, and I will take, and we can go through all the instructions how to cope with that because that could have ended very bad. Yeah, so it could. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, what happened was I wasn't quite sure, like, you, you want a sign or you want something to help you out. And I just happened to be flipping through my Instagram, and I came across a, a meme of uh, the Big Bang Theory, if anybody doesn't know about that show. But um, it was a segment between Amy and uh, Sheldon, and she turns around to him and says, you know, I don't want to be the reason you don't get a Nobel Prize. And he turned to her and said, wow. you know, um, but you're the reason I deserve it. And that just kind of like, I don't know, just threw me. And I said to myself, you know what? That's the same kind of thing that he had said to me. He's like, there is no DNA without the A. Exactly. So, like, um, before she before she came into my life, man, there was just, I would always be running around doing the music and, and just going and doing shows and doing shows and then feeling like there ain't no purpose in doing this. And then when she walked into my life, started to figure out with, shout out to him all the time, my... What a, one of the best freaking people I can actually say that walked into my life, Steve Kahn. Amazing, amazing management with her. And and you know what, man? I, I keep telling her every time when I see her, I'm like, I, I really ain't the D without the A, man. And I don't I don't ever want to lose that because, you know, even inside this performing life, it gets stressful. Like, she sees me going to studios. She sees me always on talk shows. She sees me always travel. So to, to a lot of times, man, I, I got to put my hat down for her sticking it out. Mm -hmm. Because if I didn't, you know what I mean? That, that, that's another thing with artists is they don't realize. They don't realize that, yeah, because we're artists, is, you might see us on, like, TV. You might see us go around places where people all know us and the fame. You never see what's behind the back door, mm -hmm. and you never see the people that sit there and really push you to another element in, in your career. You know what I'm saying? Even my father, man. I always got to give him a shout out because, I, you know, how many people got their parents to be like, yo, that's my son right there. He, you know what I mean? And, and I, It's amazing. Like, even my little brother hit me up on the YouTube watching this, man, and shout him out, Gamers JD. <laughs> you know, I got a lot of love for him. He shouted me out. My my niece always, you know, my niece always hits me up on the on the TikTok and stuff. And that's like little things to push, like family to yep. push. And, and and when you really see that as being an entertainer and just going out in the shows that, you know, a lot of times you got a lot of people that don't want to see you succeed because they can't do the same things that you can do. Right. I got that right. And when you got somebody that sits there behind your back and really pushes you, like I'm I'm gonna bring up a quick story right now. <laughs> You know, Strong Island, Mr. Strong Island over here, Bobby looks at me, he goes, <laughs> I watched your girl say all your lyrics to a song. When I when he said that to me, that touched me for the rest of my life because that made me like, yo, that's my number one fan no matter what. That's my heart right there. Like, you know somebody loves you so much when they can basically say all your words and see all the progress that you're moving with them. 
That's all I want to say in this, in, in this. but I really want to thank my Althea. <laughs> and, and on that note, well, <laughs> <laughs> we can actually start showing some love because yeah. actually he's done a lot in the last week, two weeks. Um, I want to give... Week. Was it? Has it been a week only? Yeah. Feels longer. But there's uh, a couple of people. Actually, Roxanne, Roxanne, New York Shout City. Out, you know what I'm saying? Inside Brooklyn. That was an awesome Beatbox interview. Radio. Love y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you very much. And um, Christian, uh, he's actually... A rise. Shout uh, out to him. Long Island on the rise. Love him, too. Long Island on the rise. Love you, man. Thank you so much for, you know, taking the time interviewing mm-hmm. me. You're, you're honestly a really amazing person for sitting there and realizing, too, that you want to give people a platform the mm-hmm. same way I do, man. So thank you guys so much for that. And oh, don't forget Obi. Shout out to my man OB. We were in the studio late at night, five o'clock in the morning, <laughs> working. We don't stop. My boy Las Vegas, shout you out too, boy. We coming with the Spanish music, man. The Spanish market. <laughs> and dad, don't think I know. didn't forget neither, man. You got the father and that. son album, boy. Mm-hmm. The father and son album. People get ready for that, man. <laughs> my father's one of the most talented individuals. Is where I got my talent from. Eddie Rock. Eddie Rock. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we have a lot of things that are going on. Um, basically, we're just pushing and uh, we're always working, especially like even with Cake Life as well. Yeah, man, that kid, that guy, man, is an amazing Over the weekend. entrepreneur. Me and him went out to the Forks, man. We sat there. We politicked all over. <laughs> we're not stopping. Everybody's like, oh, well, no, nah, man, we ain't stopping. I went out to the Forks. People even knew about this show. Stopped me and was like, hey, are you Danny from the DNA show? I was like, what? <laughs> They're like, yo, we got a star here. We got a star here. Man, shout them out too. Much love to them too, man. they dope individuals, man. They, they're they really good in the bread, man. And, and shout them out with the hats and, and all that. They're great freaking people, man. So but, shout them yeah. out. Thank and you, you know guys what, so though? much. Cake, I think thank we you have for taking to sh- me over there. We have to show that. You know, we're getting a lot of love because lately now we're actually seeing people who are their genuine selves. They're not fake. You know who I like too? Oh. That's on the station too. Oh. Frankie and Andrew. I, I love, oh, I love God, watching yes. his, love those guys. his hustle, man. So shout them out too, man. Monday nights, you know, watch this show, man, because, you know, they're really good people too, man. And Dino. Can't forget Dino. Shout out to Dino. Okay. Mr. Dino Luzzi, energy drink. Got to shout you out too. No, show me love. <laughs> Everybody shows us love, and that's the that's the whole that's the whole premise of the show. Yeah, it's you know what we're getting, we're 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 giving back, not because we have to, because we want to, you know, right? You, you know what it is, man. It's just a journey in life, and people that you meet inside the life of your journey, man, never forget because they're the ones that brought you into where you're at now. And if you 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 know, one day you got to cross that bridge again. No matter what, you're gonna have to cross that bridge. Oh, you know, we'll be cross. We'll be crossing a lot of bridges. <sighs> yeah, we'll, no. You know, it's <laughs> just every day, every week, it's something different. You know, I come home and it's like even everybody out there knows that you have like one regular job. You come home, you eat, you watch a little TV, you go to bed. That's not what happens in our life. No, but it's go to studio, <laughs> then go to the movie, then run back down the block, go to that interview. Get a call, yo. You got to go to PA. You got to sit there. You got to perform with some of the... Life is very hectic. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but he loves it. Don't even know. Don't even front. I do love it, but again, I was born in this. It's Um, not like, you know, it's not like when you first come and it's like, okay, I'm an artist. It's like, no, I watched my father take it on the mic. When I watched my father on the mic, when I watched Keith on the mic, when I watched Tone on the mic, Charles on the mic... It's just so much, you know what I'm saying? And the music comes out of your you know, your veins, your blood. So it's hard to like push that aside and say, yo, I'm not an entertainer, but you're born an entertainer. And actually, that other woman that you just uh, interviewed with, uh, Becca Rose. Um, Shout out to Becca. Fill the blank. Fill the blank, yeah. Right? Okay, yeah. fill the blank. She was um, phenomenal. And I was just walking in from work, came in. And there's Danny sitting on a podcast, and I. This is like normal for me, okay? This I just walk in, and he's on the. And I'm Another like, interview. Yeah, and I thought, and I actually thought he was, you know, just talking to somebody on the phone, and then I was like realizing that he was actually being interviewed by someone else, which was really cool. Becca Rose, you're awesome. Um, it was such a beautiful interview, and she was so she was showing so much love, and I'm like. Ugh, I, I don't know. I get choked up all the time every time I hear that because it's like it's just when when you have such a uh, a following of people who are so genuine and want to talk to you and find out all about you and everything and help you out. 
you just can't say enough, you know. You know, you know what's something cool though? When you said that somebody wrote to you about Danny never had an ego. Mm. I feel like that's what kills people in music and that's what kills people in life is having yep. an ego. He doesn't have an ego. I don't like having an ego because I feel like an ego to me is not showing off. It, an ego to me doesn't mean anything because sometimes, honest to God, yeah, we all feel like, yeah, we're the man. Yeah, we can take this <laughs> over. Yeah, we got this. But at the end of the day, man, you always have to have support, a supporting cast behind you. No, no man, like I say right now and then, no man is great without his woman. Woo. She's my backbone. She helps me, you know. But back to you know, with that interview with that with, with Rose and them, mm. I actually found her off of Greek the villain. Actually, did an interview, right? So I I, I was looking at him. I'm like, oh yeah, because you know me and Rika, man, cool. Shout out to Reek the villain, much love to you, and shout out to music industry, Long Island. Yeah, you guys, thank you guys so <laughs> much too for that interview on the magazine. It, it was amazing. Um, but. Back to her. When me and her were sitting there and we were talking, it, it, it just felt like, you know, like a friendly talk, like, mm. like you know, one of your people. So it's like, yo, you do this, you do that, you do this. It's funny because when people don't know what you do, it gets even better because they think, okay, you only got this. And all of a sudden, wait, wait, I got this. Wait a minute, I got this. Hold on, I did this. Wait, I went up here. And they're like, what? It's like, you did all this? Yeah. It's like, why are you still over there? And I'm like, that's the game, you know? Gotcha. Some people, Some people get... A, a promising chance. Some people get the chance, and some people decide, "Hey, I got, I had a chance. I want to do something different." Right. I went into politics. When everybody else was blowing up in music, I was like, mm, "You know, it's kind of cool with the music, but I'm a navigant. I'm a leader. Let me let me do something and and combining it in." And that's what got me around all of those people that you mm -hmm. know everyone yep. always says, "How did you get to the White House? How did you do stuff in the United Nations? How did you do all that?" And I explained to him. I said, "Listen, man. I said." I didn't know nobody. No. I sat there and I just did my footwork, and I and I figured out the formula to to how to really do it, and the, and it was good. Like shout out to Cake Life again, best post I have ever seen. Yeah, ninety percent of it is showing up. Right, showing up, knowing this is your job, and knowing that you're going to work for it. Yeah. See, nobody is going to give it to you, people. No. Like, to the independent artists that watch me and, and always want my advice, this is my advice to you. Go out and get it. Go out. You don't know who you're going to see at an event. You, you don't know who you're going to poly with. I'll, quick story, recap. A guy <laughs> named Ed Rodan. I didn't know this man from a hole in a wall. Hit me up on Insta uh, Facebook and said, I like everything you do with the anti-bullying. Come with me. Yeah. I came with him, right? First, we went to Brookhaven Town Hall. I know everyone in Brookhaven Town Hall because I worked there. So I'm like, all right, cool. He goes, okay, boom, we got to go somewhere else. We went right to the college in Farmingdale. Who was there? Governor Cuomo. Right. Governor Cuomo, Scott Matos, rest in peace, and Phil Boyle, right. senator. After that, got into the loop, met everybody, and just kept digging and kept going and kept going and kept going. Yep. And that's what I that's the grind. That's the, the grind. The grind is you have to you have to play this game. Not even a game. Just be yourself and and walk the journey that you need to walk in. Yeah, you can't just sit there and wait for things to happen. You got to make them happen. Yeah, like you don't ever know. Like randomly this guy hit me up that I had no clue who he was. <laughs> you know what I mean? And all of a sudden people said, oh, well, you couldn't do this with the anti-bullying in that's two where weeks. Hey, that's where <sighs> Hey You comes into effect. Hey, that song, Hey You. Hey you, you is, to that. hey you is basically a part of all the people that... You're always going to have people that you. just... Well, you know what? It, it's discouraged, but at the end of the day, it's people that don't see... I'm always going to say it just doesn't see your vision. Right. So if they don't see your vision and they're blinded and they can't see it, how are they going to move forward? You got that right. You and know what I'm now saying? moving forward. And now moving forward. Now moving forward. Uh, last time we had a little bit of a glitch on the video that we had, but this time I'm showing it again. Uh, my favorite song off the album, Regenerated, Ooh. Let Her Know. And when we come back, we'll be with Thomas Duffy. Stay tuned. Thank you. Amazing off the <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, see, mama, when I first saw you, and I saw that smile, had me going like I need her. Now I got to let her know, daddy ain't never gonna leave. You know I want you, girl, for all eternity. Now I got to let her. It was 
was meant to be And I realize you are the one That God sent to me Loving you girl Said I'm loving you girl Said I'm loving you girl Said I'm loving you girl Now I got to let her know Daddy ain't never gonna leave You know I want you girl For all eternity Now I got to let her Hello, and we're back. I want to just give a special shout out to Voice Watkins, the producer of that video. Um, In the album. Okay. In the album. (laughs) Um, But I also want to introduce an uh, an author (laughs) and Critics' Choice member, Mr. Thomas Duffy. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me on. (laughs) You're welcome. Thank you. Um, First off, I want to... um, Find out more, a little bit about you first, as to where you where you hailing from. You just gotta let us know. I'll let you know. <laughs> so, I like the I'm video. I'm from Glen Oaks, New York. Originally from Woodhaven, New York, and Queens. Oh, representing Queens, Queens today. Oh, Queens, Queens, Queens. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, She's so, from Queens too. Natural born writer. PS66, Richmond Hill, Queens. They gave me the Creative Writing Award. Oh, which wow. How old were you then? I was 11 years old when 11. I won my first wow. writing award. Oh, my God. Wait, you were 11 years old when you won your first writing award? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> that, <laughs> is, that is amazing. I didn't know. Well, I didn't... the books are amazing that you've been writing. Uh, a lot of people... I've been around New York, and your name has been circulating all over. Mm-hmm. So that's why when you know I got the chance, I was like, yeah, I got to bring him on my show. <laughs> I got to bring this guy on my show. I love oh, Danny. You, you got such great, you know, such great content. And I like, too, that you're a reviewer, too, a, uh, a music reviewer. That's, to me, that's really movie. Music movie. and film. Mostly and film. Movie. Films. Yeah, sorry. Film. Do your homework. <laughs> I did my homework, <laughs> okay, man. I'm just, I'm just so, you know, overwhelmed that we got this really great guest coming, you know? Because I seen you, too. You were like, yeah, yeah, like hyped up and slipped well, up a little I, I bit, too. Well, I did like the the part. Well, first of all, you were also an undergraduate, correct? Yes. Oh, okay. Pace so University. Pace. In Manhattan. And Hofstra as well. I did attend Hofstra as well. I'm on the island for a little while, a year oh, and a wow. half at Hofstra. I do my homework. <laughs> <laughs> I am just loving him right now. I love Danny. Okay, but first of all, um, he has... Uh, Nine, nine books. Nine published books, self-published, but they nevertheless have divi- divided audiences and united audiences equally, because they are both all in the books that are of uh, very various genres, right, different I genres that, yeah. from sci-fi to regular fiction to thriller. I dabble in all different genres, and I feel that I need to like branch out into everything. Right. Mm-hmm. And I can't just stay into one specific genre because I feel that there's just too much going on in life. Life yeah. is not one thing. Life is, this day is, could be fun, your day could be serious. It's a little bit of everything, and that's what life is, and that's what my books should be. And they are. And actually, I was, um, your, your, the latest book was The Separation, correct? That well, could... no, The Separation 2 I'm working on now. My latest book that came out was Heavenly. Heavenly. I read that one. I like that one. I like that I was that telling one. her the two. And, <laughs> and I've seen... You know, because we got to speak a little bit before you came here because you came a little bit early. You were saying a lot, too. Does your books have a lot to do with your life and your mm-hmm. experiences? Because yeah. as an artist and me, the way that I write my music, a lot of them is having, you know, first per, uh, experiences through the art. So I wanted to just, you know, yeah. ask you, you that kind of question. Yeah, I like, I like that you recognize that, Danny, because I really think that my life has taken a reappearance in my work. Mm-hmm. It's definitely... Um, 
through the characters I present, I've put myself into those characters because right, that's yeah. what makes writing great is when you put yeah. something in it that you love, that you've experienced. Yeah. And, and that's what Heavenly is. Heavenly is a book about love. It's about yeah. being reborn, learning about what's important in life. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is so and that cool. is why I was compelled to write it. And I feel it's a book that people should read. I mean, yeah. I just really think it, it, it's no, it was, important. I liked it. I re you know what, when I was first reading it, like I told you outside before, I was like, yeah, okay, it's a book. Let's just check this out. And, <laughs> and then after I was reading, like the first, when, when I got to the rat, it changed my life. When I, it, 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 it pulled me in. The realism. Just, yeah, the realism no, of the book. Ex exactly. After, as you open into the book, you get this gritty realism of his life, yes. his day-to-day -day endeavors. And all of a sudden... I remember the 7 train. Yeah. I yeah. remember That's the 7 amazing. train. As when I was That's working amazing. in Planet Hollywood in Times Square, I was taking the 7 train home, 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. And those are my experiences documented in the yeah. beginning of the book. Then I wow. take a little creative turn in the book where he goes to heaven. Uh, well, no. not heaven, but the it was sort like of like stop before. It's a, the stop before, before. heaven. Right, okay. right, 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 right. Wow. Kind of like your seven train. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Kind of yeah, like amazing. the seven train. Yeah. You're, like, really you're on your way. The next and, stop before, uh, before you head over under the water, it's okay. Next stop is Grand Central Station. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like where that level was in that book. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, he's taking me. Oh, he's taking me there. But there's not that many passengers on the train with me. Uh -huh. So what was going on? And that's where that level where I was a little bit like, oh, okay. It, it, I was always like intrigued. Every page I turned, I was like, oh, okay. You did really good with that book, let me tell you. I really appreciate that. I mean, no, I, I, tr I try to really use my imagination to think of what happens when we die. I mean, if, if we <laughs> don't so live cool. a fulfilled life, yeah. we want to be fulfilled. I think a higher power, if there exists, and I believe that one does. I believe yeah. in God. I believe in faith. And my faith led me to write this book and to say, there's more to life, and yeah. God wants you to live your life on earth to the fullest. That's true. To experience everything that life has. Yeah. And it's all its joy, its sorrow, its despair, but happiness, and it's worth the journey. Life is a journey that's worth taking. Let it, me ask you another question. Yeah. And this is, do you have any family members, like fathers? or uh, I mean, like... In your family, because my family has a lot of entertainers and they have a lot of writers. Did you? How did you get? You know this whole. What, what do you feel like in your genetics? Do you feel like somebody in your family was like mm -hmm. the same kind of the way that you would write? Like, can can you elaborate a little bit that for the sure. people? Of course, Danny. I, I grew up in a house full of books. My house in Woodhaven was wall to wall with books, oh, wow. and I would read them on the staircase and just sit there and be immersed in the books that my father would bring into the house. My father brought them all into the house, not my mom, my father. <laughs> so my father would also write. He would write like oh, really? uh, about movies that he saw, the actors in them, which movies had which actors, and that's what led me to film criticism. Oh, okay. But then at the same time, I had that passion to write because my father would always question me, well, what happened? What'd you like about the book? Right. What'd you like about the movie? And I, I took my love of criticism, my love for writing and telling stories, and I'm living that, and that, that's what I want to do with my life, is tell stories and to tell people about I what I experience. Man. You're really watching good at that. <laughs> Thank you no, so much. No, but I love the passion. That's yeah. how you know he's a great writer, because you can see the passion, and you can see the enthusiasm when he gets up. He's like, yeah, I love this, or I'm watching this, or I'm sitting there. You... People don't realize as an entertainer, you really got to study your craft no yeah. matter what. No matter what genre, no matter what arts that you do, you always have to study your craft. And it always comes from somewhere. Like, like that's amazing too, bro, because your inspiration came yeah. as the same as me. I, my father would sit there in the studio and I would literally, as a youngin', watch him just sit there in the studio right. making the beats and sitting really there it, and doing good, it. So good. when you see that, I feel like a lot of times that makes you more... You know, inspired. Inspired. And, yeah, inspired too. So you actually have a sequel coming up to the separation? separation. Yeah, that's what I was telling you. The sequel, the separation is what I'm working on. The se se separation is my most popular book. It's, it can mm -hmm. be found in the library system on online Overdrive. Yeah, Ooh. Oh, and Bruce, people can people one. can just go on Overdrive.com and find a library that has it and download it for free. I mean, I'm not even yeah. looking to make money off the right, book. Just I just it. want people to to read it and see. That's a story that's very interesting okay. about the way the sexes were divided at birth, and, and, and I continue that story on in the sequel, and um, I, I, it's actually part of a trilogy. Oh. So this is the second so that's, of the trilogy. It's like Star Wars. That's <laughs> when, no, I read that book that he was talking about. That 
that book had me like, whoa, because of the, how did you even think of like all that? Like what, what made you even see that? Like, like your thought process in that, mm-hmm. well, writing people, that pe- book. People uh, are a little uh, <laughs> concerned when I wrote that book. They said, what's going on in your head, Thomas? I said, well, you know what? What if the world existed and we were separated and the sexes didn't know about the other sex until we graduated college in order to fulfill our career goals? And, and it just made me think. And I, I oh, came up wow. with these crazy ideas. And I put them down on paper, and I wrote this story, and I, it's just it's got two other parts to it. And it's just a story that I really feel uh, says a lot about society today, you know? But that's crazy because you foresee. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of times, because that's when I, when, I, when I went around and I read it, and I was just like, whoa. Because it, it doesn't scam me. When I see something like that, I'm like, this is what you call artistry. This is something that people mm-hmm. don't, this is out the box. Right. This is what I like. Because that that puts you into another, you know what I mean? Like everybody's in a circle. You just went out that circle. You just went out that safe zone. You you're just like, you know what? This is how I'm feeling right now. This is something that I'm seeing. I want to put this out. Now the normal person, well, people that basically are reading it, they don't understand it because yep. they don't they don't understand the thought process. Right. Okay. That's why I want you to come in here and maybe explain how the thought process of you coming up with this book and what really inspired you to come up with that. Well, I actually wanted to ask him, what comes mm-hmm. first for you, the plot or the character? The plot actually comes first. Mm-hmm. The character is always going to have something with me integrated into it. Right. Okay. So, but, but to feed off of what Danny was saying is just that I think that um, art and life is about taking risks. The more mm-hmm. risks you take, the more you're going to achieve in life. And, the more, and, and separation is a book that's risky. I put it out there. I took a chance, and people found something. And, yeah. and That's the best thing I have heard anybody say in a long time. <laughs> take but, um, the risk. Don't don't matter what people think. Just take but that what, risk. But Ooh, what part? What part of it. the book do you find the most hardest to write? Which part of the book? The hardest is to when to bring it to a close. When have you said enough about what you wanted to say? Uh-huh. And separation, of course, I couldn't do all three stories. It's divided into three stories. But to close it where okay. I closed it. I think it's a cliffhanger, a, a point of the book, like that you want to end. Okay, so you want more. Okay. Yeah, to leave more, but but so, uh, the, the ending is the hardest part to say. When is I have I said enough of what I wanted to say? Okay. No. I One know. thing I wanted to ask him though: Would you ever make any of those into like a movie? Ooh. Oh, that's a great question. That's a, that's a nice. And I think I would like to see Heavenly as a film directed by Steven Spielberg. That would be cool. <laughs> that would be dope. Or anybody for that matter. Do you have anybody Who? for like the the lead role or anything? Yeah. Or? I actually for oh, like Heavenly. You want to be thick? No, the heavenly. I actually doesn't have to be a male. Well, I saw you go like well, this. Well, I'm going just saying, just doesn't like, have to what, be a male. Want to be a pick over here? I did consider Michael Sarah from Scott Pilgrim vs. Oh, the World. Oh, look at you already. You, yeah, the he's heavenly. You got the cast. Yeah, I've got the director. Uh, if it's not Spielberg, I have about ten more directors lined up that might want to take the job. I don't. Know, I don't know any directors. Do you? My father. Okay. Hey, hey there we go. <laughs> you never know. You got to be in it to win it. Hey, you got connections over here. Yep. Yeah. Don't nice. even worry about that. Mm-hmm. My other question is, what part of that book was fun to write? Which one? Heavenly? Yeah, because I'm stuck on Heavenly. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like the way that the funnest part was the part where he actually goes to the preliminary uh, heaven, the, 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 where he's jumping on the clouds oh and he's God, seeing this yes. whole other world and he's trying to figure out where he is and then he's got to def- sort of defend his life and say why he did what he did when he was and why he hasn't fulfilled the life that was expected for him. Right. And That's why I was telling you it kind of reminded me of It's a Wonderful Life. That yeah, there you go. That you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. no, that hit when when you said that I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that definitely did, but um you don't see a lot of things like that. That that was really good, man. It kind of hit that. home. I'm really, like, this yeah. is a no, it was a really good book. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Um I would suggest that everybody out there uh look at it too. Um we're going to take a break in a few seconds. Let me just finish. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, we have, um, I'm showing now the uh, video, music video that had premiered on BET and MTV. BET Jams? BET, no, BET, BET Jams, MTV Jams, VH1, World Star. Okay, so one of. Shut it out, baby. <laughs> so one of Energetic's favorite one time video that we're going to show now. So enjoy it, and we'll come back. And we're going to come back with questions. Call in, be there. <laughs> or be square <laughs> or lock you hey, yeah, yeah. Yo. to my brothers it's feeling pain in this world this goes out to everybody look 
Look, they lock you up, they wanna trap you Put you inside with a lock, it's mental block Cause all you ever hearing is the cops screaming lifeless Now all of a sudden we thinking prices Put in that two there, be called crashing in crisis Now they hating how the way how they even look They try to lock us up, throw it down, try to play the book Wanna get us shook, every time try to get it shook Overshook, saying God is there but love is overlooked When they take you, try to kill you, try to whip a ten you coolin' Now all of a sudden they be catching you with double tooling Lying one to each other, hitting what even tantal Before you say one word, the judge slamming the mantle Lock him up, put him there, lock him, hit him around doors Say that he can't come out, leave his freedom and call If they got you in cars, so we're rated, taking they made it They leave you in faded, all the time that you be saying waited You laughing, you crying, you angry, you feeling the skating They lock you up, they wanna trap you, put you inside with a lock, it's mental block Cause all you ever hearing is the cops screaming lifeless Now all of a sudden we thinking prices, put in that two there, be called crashing in crisis Now they hating how the way how they even look, they try to lock us up, throw it down, try to play the book Wanna get us shook, every time try to get it book, over shook, saying God is there but love is overlooked They wanna lock us, and throw away the key Pretending we don't exist, listen, see All they care is what they get They don't wanna see us free on that They don't care They lock you up, they wanna trap you, put you inside with a lock, it's mental block Cause all you ever hearing is the cops screaming lifeless Now all of a sudden we thinking prices, put in that two there, be called crashing in crisis Now they hating how the way how they even look, they try to lock us up, throw it down, try to play the book Wanna get us shook, every time try to get it book, over shook, saying God is there but love is overlooked See my brothers be dying, they don't care, my boys be getting shot They lock you up, they wanna trap you, put you inside with a lock, it's mental block Cause all you ever hear when it's the cops screaming lifeless Now all of a sudden we thinking prices, put in that two there, be called crashing in crisis Now they hating how the way how they even look, they try to lock us up, throw it down, try to play the book Wanna get us shook, every time try to get it book, over shook, saying God is there but love is over back and we're back um first i want to say shout out to uh everybody that's it okay so <laughs> getting back to you <laughs> i wanted to know one question oh we got his book right here two books okay uh cover uh okay now in these books what how many experiences like everything that you're going through life and whatnot when does it come to that point that you say, okay, I got to write about this one? It's funny you should say that. There are so many different things that happen for each book. Is it something in particular? Like, well, one of my books, Stock Boy Nation, the pandemic hit, and I said, I got to change this book. It was going one direction. I had okay. to switch the book into the gotcha. pandemic with Heavenly. I was just going to work one day, and it hit me. I was in the subway system. Uh, I said, what, what I saw a Let fight. me guess, the seven train? Yes. <laughs> the seven train, oh my God. Yeah. So that, it's, That's so cool. So you can go through so many experiences and say, and, but, but okay, so what particular about it though? I mean, even though you said, okay, I wrote about that, but what in particular said, oh, I got to write this? When you feel it, when, when you, you feel, feel it so much inside that you said, this has got to be a story, then you know okay. it's, it's the right thing to write. It's that simple. Okay, cool. Um, Bobby, you, did you put the phone on the... I mean, yeah, right there. Okay, call so in. Call in. If you have any questions for Mr. Thomas Duffy, please call in. Uh, otherwise, we can go on. Um, now, you could be found where? On My Amazon? Web, Amazon. Everything is on Amazon, all nine books. I'm also, you can check me out on uh, film-book.com where my movie reviews are published. Oh, okay. And uh, also www.authorthomasduffy.com, which is my website, which I will be updating as new developments occur in my career and as new books are uh, out. 
Oh, okay, cool. So artsy. You could just see it. <laughs> like, I'm, lo- I'm lo- this guy's talking. I'm just like, damn. Like, even because like, I know how it is to create and write music, but to write a book, I'm like, oh, what man, is the, that, that's, 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 that's be challenging, man. Yeah, but what is the difference between like a writer and an author? An author is somebody who has something that is shaped. The writer is just putting the, the things down on paper, I think. Right. That's a writer. An author is when they shape those ideas into something that tells a very distinct story with a plot. Okay. But so, okay, so then when you, okay. I get it. I kind of get it. I mean, yeah. I was. Re- I'm. I'm just still. <laughs> I'm still enthralled with the clouds, with the from diff- heavenly. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> it was just like such an. And then you know, at the end, he was Peter, and then he had this whole life, this whole different life that he didn't have before. And he was more fulfilled. Yeah, and it was mm-hmm. more about second chances. And mm-hmm. a lot of people don't realize that there always are second chances. That, well, I think this is beautiful. I think his his writing is honestly amazing and. Funny, the thing about you as being an uh, a really good author is you could paint a picture when you read just the, the, the first page. I'm sitting there with her and I'm reading it and I'm just like, whoa, I can actually envision and see. Yeah. You got to hook them in. That's the most important yeah. thing is yeah. hooking the, the reader in and, and, and that, right. that's it. So I wanted to mention my cover designer. I know. That's I what really, I was going to talk about. Where did you so, come so, up with these well, designs? Well, the pictures actually are taken by myself. Yours truly, most of the pictures. Some are taken by Erica Velasco as a photographer. Okay. But uh, this particular picture I took at the beach in the sky. Oh, wait, so you took and, that I, and I took that picture oh. and sent it to my cover designer. And, uh, and she puts the word up okay. there and, and the name and, and, and you know and, and that's it really and the clouds I took from you got a call in right. oh he's got a call in oh gotta... <laughs> and uh, welcome to the show go ahead <laughs> take it off yes caller you are live how can I help you and what is your name hi we have a question for Thomas Duffy sure go ahead our question is we wanted to know if he's ever considered writing a book uh, about his film criticism and the movies that he's, he's, he, he recommends. Bravo. I like that question. Yeah, that's a great question. And the answer is a resounding yes, <laughs> because I am actually working on putting together something like that. I have my 100 all-time uh, favorite movies. Oh, God. And I'm actually about 50 movies in, about halfway through 51. Oh, my God. And uh, I'm, I'm there. Uh, it's going to come out soon. It's just a matter of, of polishing it up and editing. And, oh, okay, and great. To, you know, and, and then, of course, my uh, fiction books are another... Priority. So, so I'm trying to prioritize which one's going to be released first. Basically. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and you have any other questions? Oh, they're oh, gone. Oh, man. That was quick. But you know what? That was that was dope, man. See, we got callers coming in. Oh, so you can, you can wait, wait. Hold on a second. We got, we got a movie critic here. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got a question for him. Ooh. Okay. Um, no, actually, because one of my fa- I'm a I'm a big Marvel Universe kind of girl. Mm-hmm. And you got hooked on the Avengers, so don't even start. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't even argue with her on this one. <laughs> he cannot. So go ahead. Um, so we were actually watching uh, Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. And I actually watched the first couple of them, right? And then it was the last one was No Way Home. Mm-hmm. No Way Home. Didn't like it. We okay. have a difference of opinion, however, I don't think it's the best Spider-Man film. Okay. I think the best Spider-Man film is Spider-Man 2 with Doc Ock, with Tobey Maguire. Yes. That was what I thought was absolutely amazing. And, you know, you can't duplicate the success. You can only try to recreate it the best you can. I thought No Way Home did a pretty good job. It's not, but but, but you see, No Way Home is going to appeal to people who are coming to the franchise fresh. We, we grew up on those Tobey Maguire movies when we were younger. Right, yes, okay. we did. So, you know, and, and, and they'll always be in our hearts as the, the true Spider-Man true, movie. True, so the Just new like one, the true Superman. Right, it's Christopher Reeve for yeah, me. So, you got that right. So, that, that they'll always try to reboot everything, pretty much, you know, and, and the, the, they rebooted Spider-Man a few times, a couple of times, mm. and, uh, it's not perfect. It's okay, not a so 10, wait. But, can, but can can I say something real no, quick? No, hold on a second. Hold In on. Spider Man, that gets me annoyed is it's always the third one that's just terrible. <laughs> what they do is they push every single character in one, even with the Tony Maguire one, Venom and the Sandman, and then um, what what was it? Um, the Hobgoblin. And I was like, how are you gonna mix all of these storylines in at once? We got another oh, caller. We got another caller. We got another caller. Okay, it was more about second chances. You are live on the DNA show. 
Hello. Hi, how are you? And your name, sir? Todd. Hi, Todd. And you hey, have a Todd, question for Thomas? You, yes, I, I do have a question. If okay, go if ahead. You guys are still on. <laughs> go ahead. I'd like to know, he wrote, um, when he wrote The Separation, mm. I was wondering if he knew ahead of time that all three that he's planned, I found out tonight he wants to do a trilogy. I was just curious if when he was writing the first, if the trilogy was in mind all along, or he realized it towards the end of the first book, that there's much more to say. Very good question. That is a good question. And the yeah. answer is, I always envisioned it as a trilogy. I'm, my favorite sci-fi is The Hunger Games, which was a trilogy. And actually, more than a trilogy now, they actually went and added a prequel. But Separation ends at a very specific point where it's just, I'm just getting warmed up, right. all right? Ooh. So there's two more to come, and they're coming. Just give they're me time coming. to make sure that they're perfect, because I want to make sure that the readership is phenomenal and that everybody gets what they're expecting from the sequel. And I think I'm there. I think this is going to be that like Empire Strikes Back type of right. sequel yeah, in the like book Right, yeah, like Return world. of the Jedi. Right. Then, yeah, yeah, right. the book, okay, in the book I got you. World. Can we get back? To, uh, Very thank cool. You. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you for calling. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> So with that said, so about going back to Spider Man. Oh, listen, I already, <laughs> I already explained to him, and he's gonna agree with me. For some, even what was the last one? No Way Home. Mm -hmm, no Way Home. Everything was bunched up again, and and all the characters is Doctor Ock, um, Electro. You know what? Don't even. And, and like I, I watched it, and I'm like, and then don't 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 don't, don't argue with him. No, 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 no. He's gonna agree with me on this. I'm not gonna no. argue. No, this is the same. Did man you who feel? Wait, did you feel honestly? Like everything is always bunched up, always at the third one. Like they always do the first one good, the second one phenomenal, the third one they get lazy on. <laughs> I'm serious. Well, and what I'm a think, fan of this. What do you think about the love story with Zendaya? How did you feel about that in the, the No Way Home? Oh, God. I was like, yo, I don't even want to see that. It was more depressing watching that movie at the end. I'm like, usually it brings you up and you're like, all right, what's next? I was like, can they just shut this whole movie theater down right now and just shut off that screen? It's like, yeah, well, you know, they don't, he doesn't never get back with her. He's sitting there. Oh, another caller. <laughs> okay. And you are live on the DNA show. How can I help you? Hey, thank you for having me on. No uh, problem. I had a question for uh, Tom. What is your name, though? Uh, uh, this is Dan from Hi, Cincinnati. Hi, Dan. Okay, go ahead for Thomas. Uh, my question is, uh, what's some advice that you he can give us uh, if you want to be, uh, if you're an aspiring writer? What's the uh, first okay. steps you can take if you want to try and dip your uh, toe into uh, the writing field? That's an excellent question, and the, the thing that I have to say is that you cannot, cannot look at other people's work and try to emulate it. You got to be yourself, and to be a, an author and to be a writer, you need to take what you have to say and make it have meaning to you in order to be successful doing it. If it means something to you, it will mean something to others, because we're we're the same as people. We're more similar than we are different, like Oprah says. And uh, mm -hmm. I just think that we have experiences that we want to tell, and we have to make it come alive. And to, to put it on paper is the hardest thing sometimes to certain people. Some people have it in their heads and just can't get it down. But you have to just focus. And right. with, the, with that focus, you can take the story and bring it all the way to completion and, and make that novel, that mm -hmm. book. Yeah. Everybody has good. the potential to, to tell a story. There's this one good story in every person. Maybe more, maybe 20, maybe 30, <laughs> but there's at least one. There's at least one. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for calling, Dan. Yeah, Dan. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, uh, I just no, I just want to say something because you you talked about sequels, mm -hmm. right? Um, whether it's a movie or a book or anything like that, because just like he was frustrated with uh, Spider Man with the last one, mm -hmm. oh, I hate he that was movie. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, but he was he was uh, just as easy. Tommy McGuire, bad bad feelings at three. But he was Venom. Oh wait, my god! Wait, hold on a second. Hold on. <laughs> You were just as frustrated. I got him into the Avengers. Don't even ask how, but I did. Even that movie got me angry at the he end. Got, no, 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 no. Don't say that because he wasn't angry mm -hmm. at the first few movies. Mm -hmm. He got mad and upset 
at the last movie, Endgame, when Iron Man died. Oh. Yeah, I'm like, what? That was okay, rough. So. That was a rough. Oh, death. man. That, I, Baby, I, calm down. <laughs> yeah, when they start doing that, it just gets to the point where you're like, oh, my, oh, man, you know, your, your heart and soul of the character, the Iron Man was everything to right, me about yeah. the, the, that mm-hmm. whole Marvel universe. And, but, I can understand Danny's frustration because you know, and I had frustrations with Black Widow. Too. Oh, there you go. So, so, Another movie. So it, it's it's all just a matter of um, putting up with what they throw out at us, you know, and just trying to like just take it with a grain of salt. They can always bring Iron Man back. I'm sure they can find a way to bring him back. Another they brought, universe. They brought the alien uh, Sigourney Weaver's character back in Resurrection or whatever. So so they could bring Iron Man back. We don't know what they're gonna do. Yeah, but I think they're actually I think they're actually done with the event those particular Avengers okay. because you've got so many other new characters now that have but come up never say never I think Iron Man could come back maybe 20, 30 years from now they'll, they'll reboot the franchise maybe 10 years from now who knows but I think Iron Man is, is not good. maybe Robert Downey Jr. might not play him but that oh, I there think is we'll no see. Iron Man without Robert Downey that's 100% yeah. agreed that's what we go back to what he said about <laughs> yeah. Tony McGuire and Christopher Reeve yeah. well he showed up in the third one him and they, they, they all showed up in the third one at the end, but what I don't know, man. I feel like that plot honestly was kind of just it let's just him. put yeah. it, it didn't confuse me. It, it didn't confuse me. There was a lot going it on. It was kind of like it was kind of like let's just piece it together, throw it all out there. Our contract's already done. Like I'm yeah. serious. That's, hey, well, that's how it made me feel. I can see. I can understand that. I can definitely understand your frustration with these superhero movies, and and I think we all have a little bit of frustration <laughs> with these superhero movies because we've seen the early ones, you know. Right. Yeah. Compared to the late ones, they just don't hold the like Batman. Sometimes. Let's talk about Batman. No, we can't talk right. about Batman. 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 <laughs> Batman was a. Can't talk about Batman. Let me just talk about Batman. He wants to talk about Batman. Batman. Is a gr- was a great movie with um what was the, what was the first Batman with, with Michael uh, Keaton Michael Keaton and all uh, yeah like you see all these reruns and these reruns Bale. and these re yeah Christian Bale you see all these reruns and reruns and reruns and he's just like ugh he's so and then, and then when you put on the original ones it's cool because the Joker sits there and he jumps off of the uh, the plane remember the original one mm. what was it the, the helicopter 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 yeah, yeah the and it's cool because when you watch it it's like oh, okay that's really cool like creative wise you know what Thomas, when you I see the other ones it's like too much CDI and too much special effects <laughs> and then you don't really get the storyline yeah. you know what I mean no right. I hear you the, the... Um, um, can I just say something mm-hmm. sure I think we're gonna need another hour with you guys you know for like <laughs> next show we can make a continuation we can actually make like a sequel a part two to this. Ooh. oh yeah and then we'll do the reboot a couple years Years later. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying because not only do we have an author here, we have a film critic, and he's really awesome. Um, his name is Thomas Duffy, and you can find him. Where can they find you? www.authorthomasduffy.com and take you to Amazon. We can get my books on Amazon. You can read my reviews at film-book.com. See, there you go. And we want to thank you very much for coming. You have been such a pleasant man. Thank you so much. You're welcome. This has been a very good interview, and I'm very happy that people reached out to me and said, yo, you got to put this author on your show. He's like one of the best authors, man. I read his books. They're amazing, man. And you know what? This here is a is a work of art right here. Let me put mine up. To it see. really is something different. And people, if you guys want to sit there and actually you. read and actually look this man up, I'm telling you right now, this man is not like any other author that you guys will ever hear, bro. He is amazing <laughs> thank at you what so he I does in his craft. That. I oh, you're welcome. Thank you're welcome. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you. When we come back, Alfie finally gets a gripe in. Run away, Danny. <laughs> Hello, and we're back. Okay, so last time, well, actually, it was only our first show, um, but <laughs> <laughs> last time I was not able to get my gripe in, but I have a new gripe, so it's, you ready for, what, what? Every time, uh, just, just, just do it. Okay, well, it's, it's not painful. a big deal. Just, just do it, just do it, it's painful. Okay, it's not a big deal. It better not be about me, this one. It's not about you, well, kind of is, but not. Okay, oh, so, God. no, 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 parking. Okay. Parking, is that good? Parking what? Okay, parking a car. 
Oh, okay. Okay, Mass so the only gripe I have, I put the please put the number on the screen because somebody out there has got to help me. When you're parking your car, and let's say you're going into a driveway into like a 7-Eleven or whatever, what is it with the backup? Why do people have to back up their car so it they're able to get out without having to back up when they come out of the spot? I come in, That's and I think question. this... No, 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 because I, I come in, right? And the guy... He looks like he's taking the spot on one side. So I'm like, oh, the one on the right is good. And then as I'm turning my car in, he's backing into the spot. And I'm like, <laughs> now I can't back into, I can't get into the other spot because my car is on the left side where it should be on the right side if I want to go in. What is wrong with you people? You know what's wrong with them? What? It's, it's not their fault. It's the DMV for giving them licenses. No, that well, no, <laughs> that's true and all. But what I'm, I'm asking oh, is, and then there's the you see the things that that you get away out in Suffolk County. Oh God, are not the necessarily the things you can get away with when you're in the real world. You're talking about so what you're talking about because half of the time Suffolk County, I see everything. I'm like, I thought when you go to the New York City, right, and you're sitting there by like Times Square or something, you think you see everything. But when you come to Suffolk. You see the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm yep. like, this shouldn't be over here. <laughs> One guy literally out with a freaking chicken that's like, hey, guys, how you doing? I'm like, what the hell is this guy doing? Everything's just like falling off and uh, everything like this happened like two weeks ago. I'm like, you got to be kidding me, man. And then, and then. I'm serious. Have, and then you have the, the parking like on a normal residential street. Oh, God. I see cars. People probably park the cars on top of cars. I wouldn't even be surprised anymore in these days. No, what I'm, I'm talking about those like when, you know, people who like park are the only one on the par, uh, on the block that park the other direction. Oh, yeah, of course that's me. You know why that's me? Because I love doing it. I love saying, hey, I live here. Hi. Yeah. Now, for okay. real though, I'm lazy, so... <laughs> I can't lie to anybody. You know, like sometimes, like when you go straight, and then you just like, you know what? You can go like here and turn off. Then that's too much work. Just go straight, er, right in there. And but you do that every time. Go home. You do that every time. Woman, yes, I do. I it know. Is what it I'm, is. I'm just saying. You wait, don't wait, try. wait. I thought this grape wasn't about me. Well, it's so not. So you just, you just basically put the whole grape on me. Look at I, this it, shit. it really no no it really, look at this shit no 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 it's not to that. America look at this shit oh my god you're cursing this is a a really like wholesome family show are you sure about that I don't know about that but it's not the point the point was that you know why do people do that why well I'm lazy so that's one two you got to argue with the DMV about giving these people's license and three there's so many people that just don't care anymore. I see things after the pandemic, and I'm just like, yep, nobody cares anymore. Okay, so nobody wants to call in and help? No, they don't even know how to even answer probably or this question. Would it be the same? Is it the same answer? It's the same answer. The DMV's um, fault. All right. The DM <laughs> okay, with that said. Uh -huh. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Like, oh, it's like, you got to make the test harder. Like, what, what do you want me to say? No, it's not about the test. It's just about, you know, I, I, I'm just like a conform kind of girl, you know? It's just like when you go in and you, and you see a parking spot, you look at it, you go in, and that's it. Other people decide that they're Well, when you're in New York, when you go into a parking spot, most of the time you got some crazy guy cursing you out. And they're like, what are you doing? What were you here? And he's literally down the block all the way down there, and he's cursing you for going into that freaking direction. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Like, I'm not lying. If you're from New York, you really see this. Anywhere else we go, it's like, yeah, I'll help you. I'll help you back up. The person helps you out here, backs up to another car, hits the car, and goes, okay, cool. Now, uh, can I get your insurance? You know what I mean? Like, that's New York. That's New York. You know what? You know what I? You know what I just noticed? <laughs> I think. You know what? I think we need Cake Life back on the show during this segment. No, I think you scared him off because he was did. so confused. You were like, you were shout like, out to Cake Life. Shout out to Cake Life. It's my man's. You know what I'm saying? Dope entrepreneur. But what I was saying is, you basically threw him off, throw me off, threw the callers off, threw everybody off. I didn't throw. So you just made your own parking space. <sighs> okay, fine. great job. That's, cool. That's directional. No right more there. gripes from me. Okay. And I win, America. <laughs> I have won. <laughs> For every man, this is like going on the moon. You know what I'm saying? Put the flag on the moon with like America after this. She said, no more grapes. That means I'm safe now. That is not true. Yeah, it's true. No, it's not true. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so um, on the next show, we'll, 
we'll be having a whole lot more fun. Um, we want to shout out again to Thomas Duffy, the author, for coming in. That was really spectacular. And um, you should really go out and get his books, The Separation or Heavenly. Um, author, yeah, ThomasDuffy.com. Okay. Now, any other special shout outs? Yeah, I got hundreds of them. Okay, go ahead. Shout out to my boy Dandada. Shout out to my little brother Joey. Shout out to my mom that's watching this. Shout out to my pops. Shout out to my grandmother. Shout out to everybody Mima. that is watching. Thank y'all all. This is great. She said no more grudge. Whatever. It's gone. <laughs> bye bye. The parking spaces didn't get filled. I'm happy. Oh man. No, go ahead. You don't know. You have no oh, idea. Here, here, finally. Finally. After one minute, she really comes out. Go ahead. Who comes out? You. What are you talking about? Exactly. I have one again. <laughs> That's the second time that, you know, three times, you know, there's three strikes and then I'm out. So I still have next week. <laughs> I'm going to make sure <laughs> you're out of here. <laughs> ain't no sliding, ain't you? no swinging, ain't no batting, ain't no going in. It's batter, 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 swing. Okay, but. Um, Gone. What do we got coming up now? Um, What do you mean? Like uh, show wise? Yeah. We got that. Uh, you got that show on March twenty sixth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. March twenty sixth, man. Shout out everybody out. Homeboy hit me up. He said, "Yo, D, can you be on the show?" I said, "Absolutely." And we're gonna keep it going from there. But um, you know, I want to take the time to really thank our guests for coming on, and it was kind of cool because a lot of times you don't really get to see like creativity, and and I think yeah. honestly, reading his books. A lot of I, my my favorite thing is people that are out of the box. People that you're, right. you're not even sitting in there. You wouldn't even think that can actually sit there and actually like judge a book by its cover, literally. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, when you see cool. it, you're like, "Whoa!" So that's something that inspires somebody else because people don't realize the person that doesn't say nothing, person that's mostly quiet, person that's just analyzing everything is the person that's basically gonna come for your ass. Right. Right. And and. Not trying to sound crazy, not trying to, you know, really, you know, but I'm being honest with you. I've seen it plenty of times. I've seen the most quietest person shock everybody in the room, and the last person just become quiet. And who's the most quiet in this room? <laughs> not me, shit. <laughs> well, ain't, ain't that the truth, but... Uh, what truth? I truth know. so help you grudge? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Are you? laughs> He's on a roll today, people. Get the um, ham and get the cheese out, you heard? Uh, all right, go ahead. All right, well, thank you all for watching. Um, we will uh, keep shouting out everybody that's showing us so much love because we it would literally take us a well, whole thankful, hour. Real quick, though, we're thankful because the show did very well last week, you know, so I just want to thank everybody who comes in and always supports. God bless y'all all, man. And honest to God, man, I wanted to say a prayer out, a prayer out for those people right now that are fighting inside the war right now against Russia. Go mm-hmm. ahead, babe. No, no, no. We, I mean, it's hard to watch because we, you, you know watch it every day. We hold your prayers, and mm-hmm. we just want to thank everybody too, man, and just pray for them at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. And bye bye. <laughs>